Okay. I was going into YouTube and uh, I um, I was, it was a meet the press and they were talking about, um, you know, doing, trying to track pandemics. And the thing is, is that um, we eliminated the capability to track pandemics about uh, 20 years ago. There was some work being done um, at the government. It was called the Telemed Project. And the purpose of this project was to permit um, the correlation, that is the relationship, the finding and relating the collection of records that identify, um, that, that should be associated with you, your identity. So that anytime you get a uh, project, anytime you get uh, um, healthcare, anytime uh, they collect healthcare information about you, then it should be correlated uh, based upon your identity, your actual identity, not a numeric ID. And so, um, anyhow, the, the, uh, what I mentioned, and probably what I should really say on the forefront is, is that numeric IDs don't actually imply identity. That's the reason why ID theft is possible. You know, that somebody can hijack your numeric IDs, but the numeric IDs, I, I mean, if they know them, but the numeric IDs are not um, are not an identifier of you. They're not identifier of records in a system that represent you. And the only way that people are able to determine if it is you is by <clears throat> you're retaining that numeric ID and not sharing it with the rest of the world. However, um, you have on you many different kinds of biometric information and personal information that together in, in, in combination um, using statistics you can determine um, with a high, a high degree of reliability that um, records you have are yours because they collected that identifying information at all the various sorts of places where you had your healthcare work done anytime you got opened up an account or anything rather than using the numeric ID they could use uh, identifying features such as facial qualities biometrics all that stuff it doesn't mean you have to have all those things it means that uh, any combination of them would increase your score on that record and then uh, it would it would raise up a red flag that these records are all correlated because your identity um, the scoring uh, uh, of how your identify how, how your ID is matched, um, the scoring process, which is called fuzzy logic, um, says that they're relatively they're more close than anybody else in the in the world, and so um, then they get correlated instantly, and um, it's the same sort of thing you do whenever you go looking for stuff on Google you're going to mention more tags and each tag is going to uh, uh, delve down into which uh, what information you're looking for and each time you add something it it um, narrows down the search it's almost the same sort of thing but um, you're instead of using numeric IDs uh, instead of using tags you're using um, biometrics, you're using names, you're using address, you're using um, a combination of things to try to find your records um, or to correlate records. And so, um, and even Facebook friends could be an identifying uh, thing. You would still be using a login and password to obtain your, your records, but you could um, call back from your Facebook profile um, to the record system each time you, um, each time you established um, healthcare records at each institution where you have things done, and and through that correlation they can determine what records are yours and um, relate them across institutions. Um, that would be just a simple way that you could do things like that. Just the fact that you can you can uh, do a lot of stuff with Facebook, but you can't correlate your medical healthcare records um, is proof that something screwed up in the world. And um, people will say, well, isn't that an invasion of privacy? Look, if you don't want people to, to find out um, stuff about you that will be 
uh, important whenever they have to take care of your health care, like that you might be um, you might uh, be allergic to certain kinds of um, of uh, anesthesia, um, then no surgeon is going to touch you for three hours until it can verify um, that piece of information and you will die on the on the table because the surgeon's not going to risk um, a malpractice suit to apply anesthesia to, um, to the risk of uh, killing you with anesthesia unless somehow they can get some sort of a document that's that waves them waves your rights to um, to um, to that so the thing is is that if you had a um, if you if there was a way to correlate the records not using numeric identifiers then and using just uh, attributes physical attributes which could be done very fairly easily um, and you just create a scoring system with fuzzy logic you can pretty much um, eliminate ID theft for one and you can create uh, a unified healthcare system and be able to track pandemics and um, this will not be done in private industry because it uh, implies that you they will not that they will have to be in direct uh, competition with each other and no healthcare um, no healthcare informatics uh, private industry company wants to um, to to uh, be competitive with others they want monopolies internally they want monopolies and that's the way healthcare informatics has been done for decades is by uh, is is each company tries to maintain a monopoly they try to make sure that their record systems the only record systems that use and if you switch to a different one then they they go in kicking and screaming they won't let you transfer your data over so you end up having to get people to rekey in the information into the second database and the reason why you're still having to do that is because you're you haven't fixed the problem of identifying people, you still identify people with uh, with numbers that you you're still using database numbering um, of records in order to correlate people's identities. And as long as you do that, you'll never have a um, you'll never have a standards for um, integrating healthcare record information or ability to track pandemics. Um, it just won't happen. Um, the only the only way you can do it now, I guess, is by using social security numbers in all of the records. But you, but the, because of HIPAA regulations, um, you can't even pass information about a uh, patient across record systems from different hospital clinics and and whatnot. You can't track those pandemics. Um, you might be able to, but I I kind of doubt that it's at a level like being able to do a Google search so and just the fact that and and a good the canary in the coal mine is is that if we did have such a system in place that could track people based upon actual identifiers what what how you recognize people how you can recognize people um, using attributes of themselves not at, not numeric IDs um, just the fact that we still use numeric IDs and we don't use actual identifiers is the reason why identity theft is even possible. So that's how you eliminate ID theft is by getting rid of numeric identifiers and replacing them with a with a, um, a scoring system that uses fuzzy logic to correlate the records, okay? That's how you do it. And you use the numeric IDs just to, um, just to um, verify in other ways, but the thing is, is that um, you're going. If you're trying to find all of the records for a particular person, you would have to have all those identifiers, and um, and then you can find all their records, and then you can ask the patient which ones are your records and which ones are not, and then they could go around and and say, well, this is not, that's not, and then all those records get correlated, and that becomes their their patient record. Um, I think right now is probably every single healthcare institution is trying to do something like this, but there's no standard. And the reason why there's no standard is because the this area of the of how things are handled is not handled by the government. 
and because we are we're all always uh we we are not uh, i mean private industry is, is going kicking and screaming into not permitting the government to ever socialize healthcare. If we socialized it for just a year or two, that would fix this problem. But, you know, it's not going to get socialized. Um, see, when you so, when you do anything that involves the government, you get benefits out of it. With um, with the space program, we got um, uh, we got microchips. With um, the with the um, um, the need to to provide communications in the event of nuclear attack, we got the internet. And so those those standards come about because there is a need and it's usually at a governmental level. It's not at a private industry level. Private industry only addresses things that make monetary market-wise sense. Um, whenever you're trying to develop a standard of, uh, of something that everybody needs, Private industry is not going to address that unless it makes monetary sense. And so if it puts them in competition with other private industry, they're not going to work on stuff like that. That's where you have to bring the government in and the government needs to solve that problem. And so the, the solutions exist, it's just we don't have them in place and we won't have them in place until um, private industry comes to the realization that they're not going to be able to do it. And that they, they're not going to address it because it's going to put them that they don't want to compete with other um, healthcare informatics. So they don't want to compete with other people because they, because they're um, if, if you, if you create standards for anything that, that everybody has to obey, then it puts everybody in direct competition with each other. It's just like the oil industry. If people use electric vehicles and it puts the oil industry industry in direct competition with all the other forms of, uh, of, of energy use, because electricity is a unifying, um, is a unites all of the various forms of, uh, inf of um, energy collection, uh, energy creation. And the oil and gas industry has a monopoly with gas-powered vehicles because nothing else can be used. But if you use electric vehicles, then it puts everybody on a level playing field and it would actually raise the value of oil and, um, and you know, of fo fossil fuels uh, when you can't address the need with renewables, you know. But they don't want renewables to be competing with it because it's way too easy just to mine for oil and coal and things like that and and provide, I mean, mine oil and provide for the cars. But the reason why China was trying to develop electric vehicles is because they didn't want to be, um, they didn't want to cooperate with other countries that were producing oil. You know, they did, they wanted, and they wanted to eliminate smog, so they they went for electric vehicles because that would make them uh, independent of the rest of the world. And so, so that's what they were doing. And now we can go for electric vehicles, but the oil industry and all of that's not going to be receptive to it. Um, and it's probably the reason why they're really eager for people to get back in and working and stuff is because that's our, um, that's our, um, meat and potatoes of, of surviving but um if we if we um um if we don't use electric vehicles and then, then we're going to be dependent on oil in the future and so what we need to do is we need to go to electric vehicles so that we can save the environment so that we can um reduce the consumption of uh, non-renewables and, and use them only on a rainy day and then use the, the renewables as our primary source of energy. And then that way we're able to have a cleaner planet and things of that nature. Um, that's all about creating fair markets. We don't have fair markets. As much as the conservatives would think that things are fair in the marketplace, that it, there aren't because um, c capitalism um, tends to prefer monopolies even whenever the laws say that we shouldn't have monopolies capitalism will find a way to produce monopolies 
if possible, because that's the dark side of capitalism. Um, the dark side of socialism is whenever government wants to control its people, they'll use socialism to keep all of co competition out, out of, you know, keep others from competing with it um, by making people give more money to the government and then your government uh, as an organization gets to be bigger than any company. That's the reason why China doesn't have democracy is because their government has sucked up all the money and they've killed off all the billionaires to prevent any kind of competition from any other entity that might um, might be able to to um, to change the situation. So, you know, in socialism, uh, there's a preference of socialism to avoid um, being equal to private industry. Um, that's the dark side of, of socialism. The dark side of capitalism is not to want to be equal to other private industry. It's, it's a tendency to want to be monop to create monopolies. That's the intent of every, that's the heart of every single company. Um, whether the people share this idea, that's the intent when you're making money, that's the intent is, is that you have, it, it's the reason why whenever you create a startup, your um, investor is going to want to maintain that you have a patent on your technology because the patent's going to guarantee you that um, the ability to survive in the marketplace. Um, it's a way of almost getting kind of a monopoly, a temporary monopoly on that technology so that for seven years you're able to bring in a lot of money and then that will pay for, um, you know, that that will pay for the loan that they offered you early on and then some, okay? And so, but um, you need, the thing is, is that um, we need to be aware that there are other ways to produce monopolies and, and in uh, in computer systems how you create monopolies is by um, by generating standards that imply your own computer software such as the way Microsoft does it with their with their file formats their file formats imply that you have to buy their software to remain compatible with the files that there is they don't tend to like to have open standards for information um, um, information sharing among ver among other people that aren't them okay and that's a called an information monopoly it's but that information monopoly creates a business monopoly it's the reason why we had an antitrust suit against Microsoft in 2000 was because people came to the realization that that a data monopoly implies a ca a um, commercial monopoly and so um, when people when people uh, think that monopolies don't exist that's BS the monopolies are all over the place if you don't have any um, if you have to do something in favor of some company or some private industry if you have to uh, if there is no standard, if there's no open environment, if there's no flexibility somewhere, then you don't, then, and you have a, a constraint. If you have any constraints, then you have monopolies because monopolies, um, monopolies prefer constraints. They want a constraint of, um, of access. They want a constraint of, um, purchase. You know, when you buy, a washing machine you can only get the parts for that washing machine from the company you bought the washing machine from um, if the government was involved they would be telling the people who make the washing machine that uh, for a good bit of the parts you can't you have to use um, standard parts you can't use your own parts and you can't charge people for you know to get you know we you have to be open that people are going to be able to create generic parts for your machine and you won't be able to keep them from doing that and so, so on and so forth. And see, the thing is, is having flexibility, the ability to to make, um, to, to do stuff. So anyhow, and so I've just been trying to, to push this idea that uh, we need um, 
uh, healthcare, uh, a unified healthcare informatics system. And it's the reason why we can't track pan this pandemic in real time. It's um, that what they have to literally do is call to every single clinic and check up on all the people, but they don't even know who's got it and who hasn't got it and, you know, who got into the, because they're using paper records everywhere in our healthcare industry. They're not using, uh, they're not correlating uh, records using identifiers and they don't have a digital system in place because people have avoided doing that because they're afraid that it would affect their um, their privacy. You know, people didn't want to be able to be accessible the way Google pages are accessible to the world whenever you want to do searches for them. Um, they don't want their healthcare records to be found um, by somebody simply doing an identifier check against their biometrics. I can understand that, but you can also set up policies in place that whenever um, say that somebody's looking for HIV information. If any, if a if a, a query goes out for um, HIV information, you can set a policy in place with the with the place where you had your H, HIV testing done. That if the di if the uh, query comes through, it just doesn't respond at all. Because if you you do respond to it and say um, um, we don't have that or um, um, we have that record, but we can't provide it. That's saying that it has, that the person um, had a need to do the HIV test, which is information. And so the, the thing is, is you create a policy and say, you just don't respond to queries when they come in for a person, whenever it's checking for I, HIV uh, test results, okay? Um, so it's not that they find your HIV test results. They, they can't even identify that you've had HIV test results because there's a policy put in place in the system that's accepting the query and is going to determine whether or not it sends information out. Um, and so in the other, the HIPAA was to um, approach two things. It was to create um, um, legislation on how to treat uh, patient records with paper records and that was the fallback that it had support the paper record system but they added to it if you were to ever do a digital um, access of healthcare records um, across institutions that you have enough security in place and let enough credential checks and all this sort of stuff and they were working on that in the telemed project back in Los Alamos National Laboratory they didn't continue it because private industry said it was competing with them. The private industry probably could see how this could lead to other things that would put them in in um, competition with other companies. And it would eliminate a lot of their data monopoli mon monopolies. Whenever I talk about data monopolies to people, they think I'm talking about um, people having access to healthcare records. No, I'm talking about the data formats, the, um, the way that people are able to communicate across computer systems um, by having interface standards. And that's something that people are not aware of because people are not programmers. If you're a programmer, you know that you need, in order to access somebody's special database or to, to be able to work with another program, you need an API. And there are no real APIs for healthcare informatics systems um, that actually use patient identifiers, uh, physical identifiers, and not numeric, uh, not just numeric identifiers. And so you, you can't correlate all the records that, um, all the, you can't correlate all of the healthcare that you, that you've experienced in the last 20, 30 years, um, um, quickly, um, you can't, you can't do it at all because there's no such system in place. Um, how you do it is, is by, um, collecting all your paper records from every single doctor you've ever been to and um, carrying it via sneaker net, that means by foot, um, to every doctor. Otherwise, the doctors have to um, give you a form and ask you for healthcare information so that they can update uh, your record with them. Just the fact that you have to waste that hour every time you're in the clinic is proof that um, there is no systems in place to permit um, to permit uh, doctors to find your healthcare records, 
There is no systems in place to track pandemics. There is no systems in place to eliminate ID theft. It's because we are not, um, we're not really concerned about identifying people. Um, we're not, the people are more afraid of how, um, what would be needed in order to identify them uh, than uh, realizing that all the information that's necessary to identify you is already on you. It's your physical attributes. It's your face. It's your blood type. But all those, your name, where you live, the people you know, that's all identifiers. And you can, anybody can find you on Google, but they can't find you, they can't find your healthcare record. Um, it, even if they have the right credentials, if they're a doctor and they have a certain status and whatnot, um, you know, those are the people that need to have access to your healthcare record. And, and they should only have access to your healthcare record whenever you provide them a special identifier that permits them access to all of your healthcare record. Um, that would be like a special key or a special password that you would give them, but it would be a one-time use password or something like that that would give them temporary access to your healthcare record. And then they could go off and do a query across the entire network of healthcare record systems and get back all your information by um, taking your identi by identifying attributes and using that to, to develop a scoring and then find the related um, um, records. And the, the fact that this is not being done, uh, I mean, the canary in the coal mine that this is not being done is, is that you have to provide all your healthcare information with every doctor that you go to. That's just the canary in the coal mine. That's just the proof that, uh, and it, some people are probably not familiar with this idea called canary in the coal mine. A canary um, is used in coal mines when people are working in coal mines to identify when there's a gas leak. Because um, if the canary is dead, then you know you're not supposed to go into the coal mine. So it's an it's it's a flag, it's a it's a it's a a flag up to let you know that you're not supposed to go into into the um, mine. That's how they uh, that's kind of the the um, healthcare insurance of somebody who works in a mine is to look at the canary and if the canary's dead, they don't go into the mine because they know there's either um, th that there's a gas leak somewhere in there. Um, in the mine, um, there's there's some sort of toxic gas that just got released, and um, it it's going to kill kill you if you're in there. Or um, there might be carbon monoxide. Uh, there might be a carbon monoxide uh, gas leak, and that's just going to eliminate all the oxygen. Okay, so you're going to suffocate in there. Um, but when I talk about canary in the coal mine, it's an, a way to identify that you don't have certain systems in place. Um, in this case, having a unified healthcare record system and the ability to search for patients by identifying attributes and find their records, though such system doesn't exist because private industry had no reason to actually implement it. Um, private industry tends to prefer monopolies, and if it had such a thing in place, then it wouldn't have it wouldn't be able to maintain a monopoly. So it's not in their best interest. To implement such things the only it's in the best interest of people and the government should be concerned about people not private industry and um, when it's people's lives are on the line you should be concerned about that not about private industry and just the fact that our government uh, panders to the private industry at every turn is the fact that our democracy doesn't work anymore um, it is responsible. It does not respond to the people. It responds to private industry because that's what's going to determine its longevity, not the people anymore. Because the people don't make enough money to actually sway um, the politics of how our country is run, and that's the reason why we don't have any democracy anymore. Is because we don't matter, um, and so they maybe use America and all these things to give us pride, but the, the, but we're just as useless as the Chinese in that we don't have um, a significant ownership of, of America and the significant ownership of America is in corporate and in certain rich families and in corporations. And they're the guys who are going to be able to sway um, 
the determine what is or is not implemented in this country. It isn't the people. The people don't have, uh, you know, we had that kind of control in the early part of the country whenever we uh, we um, lost, I mean, that we were able to keep England from controlling us and uh, to scare them, uh, scare them away. When we scared them away, then we were able to take ownership of the country, but we really didn't have any, uh, nobody had any um, uh, monopoly on, on America at that time. Um, the only monopoly that probably was ever was, was that, that we were enslaving black people and we had a slave trade and that's what was driving people to come to America is that we had a uh, slave trade and people just don't realize that attribute of our country is that if it weren't for the slave trade we probably wouldn't even have an America and before that it was the um, the trading of um, badger of what was it beaver skins beaver skins before that and so if you don't have some sort of monetary industry that encourages people to come to your country or something that they can benefit from they're not going to come to the country and so that's it money does drive um, the politics and um, I guess when the companies were putting their industries up in China they were thinking that they're going to bring about democracy in that communist nation but the the reality was the communist nation was going to hoard all the money for themselves and keep all their people poor and if anybody got to be um got to make enough money to be able to compete with the government government just goes and pretty simply just takes them out you know and that's the reason why the chinese government never uh that, that democracy really just didn't get a foothold on that on on China is because um, they had put policy into place to avoid the potential of ever being in competition with uh, any kind of private industry in America we permit private industry the problem is is in America we permit private industry to have control over the government which is the reason why we don't have any democracy anymore but um, we need to have more standards in place and we need to have more policy in place to protect people and if we don't have the policy in place to protect people and people's rights then um we're going to become um a, we're gonna we're gonna become um we're, we're gonna lose our democracy we're gonna lose our freedom we're gonna lose all of that because um the government is going to be in bed with commercial industry and we need to make the government fearful of us not of commercial industry we need to make commercial industry realize that they cannot survive without us and um, if they don't realize that now obviously this, this pandemic has really kind of made that uh, um, a, made them aware of how much they're dependent on us um, because the government is not going to be able to print checks forever but, um, you know, they're not going to, the, the companies are certainly not going to work, want to work on debt. You know, they're going to want to work on actually having something. They're not going to be wanting to pay back debt for the rest of their lives, just as, uh, just as we don't want to be paying back debt for the rest of our lives. Um, so we can't afford to get into debt, but, um, but we do need to have more control over how the government does things and we need to have a unified healthcare informatic systems we need to be using uh, actual identifiers and not numeric IDs it's the fact that we use numeric IDs is the reason why we have identity theft in the first place so